Rub up your engines! Well, here we go with the government again, the NHTSA, National Highway Traffic Safety Association, or whatever it means, says that by 2026, the average car being sold has to have 49 miles a gallon. And they say things like, this will save Americans hundreds of dollars a year. What a bunch of nonsense. You buy a new car, where they go from 50 to $80,000, and you save a few hundred bucks a year in gas, you're not saving money. It's like you see something on TV, you know, an ad. Come to our sale, we'll save you money. You're not saving your money, you're buying, you're spending money. You're not saving anything. And in this case, it's absurd that you would spend, you know, fifty to ninety thousand dollars for a car that's gonna save you hundreds of dollars in gasoline a year. It ain't gonna be saving you nothing. You threw all that money out the window to buy the thing in the first place. I just laugh at these things, you know? The BS that these bureaucrats throw out about, well, this will save people money. It's not saving any money. They're spending a fortune to buy the stupid vehicle in the first place. <laughs> You know how many centuries it would take for you to break even if you had a car that got 30 miles a gallon now and you spend 50 to 100 grand for one that gets, you know, 10 miles a gallon better? You're never going to break even. The car's going to last that long either. Those new cars, in order to get that kind of gas much, are so complex. I know, I fix them, right? They're so complex that when they break, it'll also cost you a fortune more to repair them. So it's just an endless throwing your money into a endless money pit. <laughs> if you buy a high tech car, and it starts to break down, it's not going to save you money. Believe me, I fix the stupid things. They get more and more complex. They break down more often. Like, okay, let's put little bitty three-cylinder engines in them. They get better gas mileage. Yeah, and they wear out faster because Americans don't want slow cars, so then they turbocharge them, put GDI, and then they go fast, and they, on paper, get good gas mileage, but, of course, they wear out faster, and then you got to buy another car again anyway. Sarah F1005 says, is it time to get rid of my car? I got a 98 Honda. Accord EXV6. Had it since 2005 when I bought it used. I have harsh shifting. It bucks when it changes gears. No check engine lights. Mechanic says there's no codes. Should I get rid of it? Probably. Your transmission invariably is wearing out. They wear out on those. It's a 98. It's an older car. In order to rebuild those transmissions correctly, it goes anywhere from 3500 bucks up. Of course, you can gamble with the used transmission, stuff like that, but that's a big gamble. I would say definitely time to move on. You've had it since 05, so you've had it for what, 17 years? I'd say move on. I wouldn't put money. Oh, just keep driving it. See how long it lasts. But, you know, ah, the transmission sure seems like it's going out. Yeah, if you're near Rhode Island or Tennessee when I'm there in the summer, you bring it by. I can road test and put my fancy computer. I can tell you for sure what's wrong. But from my experience of those, the transmission's going out and it's, it's time to move on. Or just keep driving until it stops running because, you know, you're not going to put 35 to 5,500 bucks in that thing to fix it, right? And sometimes it can last quite a bit longer if you don't mind the little harsh shifts. You never know. But if you want dependable transportation for the far future, I'd say get rid of it and get another car. Redemption says, Scotty, my father's Volvo S60 wipers are broken and wants to know if you can use other wiper blades on the car. You can use whatever wiper blades will fit. I don't know what you're saying is broken. If it's the assembly with the blade and the metal part, you can buy that whole thing at any auto parts store, discount parts store. You can sell you one, they'll snap right in. But let's say it's the arm itself. Well, the only thing that's going to fit on there is a Volvo one. You can go to a junkyard and get a used one or something. But let's say if those aren't working, here's a tip that often fixes. Realize those things are bolted on the bottom end, right? They're in there. You pick up little plastic crap. You see this bolt. Sometimes the bolts get loose. <laughs> and then the motor goes, nye, nye, but it doesn't move them because it's loose. All you got to do is turn them off so they're off. Then they stay on the bottom. Then tighten that bolt. And if you find it works, you got a real cheap fix from Scotty. That can often fix them. A lot of times those bolts will get loose. If it's an older car, you didn't give the year, but it's an S60, so I assume it's relatively old. Just tighten them back on. It could be they're just loose. I see that all the time. All that ding, 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 millions of times. Eventually, the bolt gets loose. And you just have to tighten it up. I bought a VW, says, how do you fix DTC PO420? I got a Volkswagen, 2003. I had PO420, I had the catalyst removed. Check engine lights on again. I put spacers on, I did all kinds of things. What can I do? That's the code for inefficient catalytic converter. It's not working right. Well, you gutted it. You took everything out. So, of course, it's going to be inefficient. It's not going to work at all. <laughs> 
car runs fine? Hey, just live with it. That's what people in Tennessee do. They don't do emissions testing, so they'll just gut the stuff or throw the cats and put a straight pipe in, and the car actually runs better. But the Chang engine light will always come on because the computer knows the catalytic converter is inefficient because there isn't even one in there. It's not doing anything. <laughs> Once you start modifying things, you can make the cars run better, but if the software is going to go bananas and you're going to get codes up the wazoo, I'm surprised you don't even get more codes in PO420. You probably get oxygen sensor codes and other things too, but my advice is just live with it. Or if you want to fix it, buy a catalytic converter. Don't just take the old one out, gut it, and put it in. If it's running fine, you don't care. Now, I don't know where you are, but I'm assuming you've got a three cylinder one, so I'm assuming you're not in the United States. If they do emissions testing, you're going to be screwed. It's going to fail emissions testing. If you wanted to pass that, you'd have to put a catalytic converter back on it. Blevins 350 says, I got an online Toyota Sienna. The immobilizer light suddenly comes on after I turn the car off and when a door is opened while I'm idling. I did get a light bulb replaced a day ago. I'm not sure if this could cause it. Well, it could if they put the wrong bulb in. I have seen this happen many times times. Each car has special size bulbs, right? Other bulbs may fit in there, but they're not the right one. I would go to Toyota, buy the correct bulb and put it in. Pray that fixes it, because if not, you got a problem with your immobilizer system, and they're very complex to work on. Now, rarely do they ever break down a Toyota, so I wouldn't be surprised if they put the wrong bulb in. And let's say you get the right bulb and you put it in. You still have a problem? But the other one was a wrong bulb, maybe the wrong type fitting, or maybe it was an LED when it should have been an incandescent bulb, whatever. Keep the bulb. That could have ruined the immobilizer system, in which case the guy that put it in is going to be liable for the damage that was done. Electrical systems in a car are all tied in. You have one problem over here, it can easily go all through the system, so it could have caused it. Seems to me rather more than a coincidence that you just had the bulb changed and now that light's coming on. Pray you put the right one and fix it and you don't have to go any further, but if not, get your phone, videotape the whole thing and say, this guy screwed up, he's liable for fixing the problem he created. Well, here's one for you. A Jaguar shut down a Mercedes-Benz plant in India. Now, not a Jaguar car, an actual Jaguar. <laughs> walked in the plant and they had to shut it down. A leopard walked into the Mercedes-Benz factory and for a couple hours they had to shut it down as they shooed the leopard out. It was a three-year-old male leopard, so it was a big one. Now, giving praise to the Indians, they didn't go in and shoot it. They got a, an animal response team and they safely got it out without having to shoot it. Now, there's rapid deforestation around this factory. No food, they're building factories all over the place, right? They figured the leopard came in and looked for some food. Now, they make some pretty fancy cars. Yeah, they make the Maybach S560. They're all made for Indian consumption. They built these Mercedes in India and they sell them there. Now, interesting enough, Mercedes debuted a car, the S65 AMG, and they said it had the first world scan technology for scanning where you're driving. But it turns out that 30 years earlier in Infinity, they had that system. And in the Infinities, they called it the Leopard. That was the system as a Leopard can see at night, right? So it could scan. So maybe this Leopard was getting revenge <laughs> going in the factory where they built the Mercedes. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> but yes, a Jaguar did shut down a Mercedes plant for a few hours, but it wasn't a Jaguar car. It was an actual Jaguar, and they did take it out safely, I gotta say. And then they go in and shoot it, captured it, and released it. They didn't kill the thing. Well, you see, Tesla isn't gonna be making that cyber truck, all that news, and it was an April Fool's joke. To me, this shows you why you should not believe media. Car Buzz, which is a media outlet, put out the story that, oh, they're not making the electric Tesla truck, the cyber truck, right? I used to work at CBS. Let me tell you, I wouldn't believe anything those people say anymore. They're just out to get views from whatever sensational nonsense they can. And in this case, from what I read, hey, thousands of people were going to cancel their reservations. You know, hey, it can hurt the guy business. You know, it's just a stupid idea. They thought, oh, this is so funny. Let's stick it out there. I think it's nonsense that these media companies throw out stuff like that. Tell the truth about stuff. The, even the name media these days pretty much means be ass. Whenever people say to me, well, you're social media. No, I'm not social media. I'm Scotty. I'm giving people information about cars from working on them for 53 years. I'm not social media. It just spews more nonsense like this guy saying that they're not making the Cybertruck now. I mean, really, the Cybertruck, as far as I'm concerned, it looks like something that Homer Simpson would have come up with when he made that stupid car. To me, it's the same thing. It's like, here's what aliens would drive around in, right? But as much as I'm not an Elon Musk fan, you know, coming up with this fake stuff saying that something is gone when it isn't. And, oh, look what we did. We created an uproar. You know, what a bunch of nonsense. Well, they will or not, but, you know, old Elon didn't cancel it yet, so don't believe the April Fool's joke that these car buzz guys threw out.
So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.